Hey, what's going on everyone? Dr. Ryan Bombs here, physical therapist with Endeavor Health. In this video, we're gonna talk about working from home, ergonomics, the sitting edition. Okay, sounds like a lot of us are still going to be working from home for a while in the near future. So um, better late than never, let's go over one of the reasons why work, working from home ergonomics is so important. One of the first things is preventing injuries, preventing the common aches and pains that you may be feeling when you're at your desk. And so in this video, I'm gonna go over best positions, best positions to do with the chair, with your monitor, and with your whole setup with your keyboard for your hands and wrists and shoulders to help you um, have a better work environment for your office. All right, let's get to it. Now, I do wanna make a comment that alignment is important, but more importantly, because you're working from home and even though you're in a static position for most of the time, you should be moving, should be giving yourself plenty of breaks. But the most important thing is not so much alignment, but making sure that you're positioning yourself so that you can move most efficiently throughout the day in that static position. And in a little bit, when I go over all the little tips and tricks you need to do for your positioning, you'll see that the better your positioning can be, the least amount of work, or more importantly, the more efficient amount of work your body can move so it could be better optimized to withstand sitting at the desk for long periods of time. All right, on the whiteboard, I put down uh, work from home ergonomics and the injury risks. So the first one will likely be your neck. Second one will be the shoulder. And last but not least is hand and wrist. And this is where you sometimes hear people have carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, due to poor positioning. All right, the first thing that we're gonna talk about that's so important with work from home ergonomics at your home office um, is seat height. And this is usually the order that I work with when I uh, work with patients. So the first thing you wanna adjust and look at will be your seat height with your chair. So come on over. So the biggest thing with seat height is where is this gonna be in relation to your desk? If I lower this here, when it's too low, now I have to do extra work with my hands to get to the level of the desk. And while this doesn't seem like a lot, when you multiply this eight hours in a day or maybe more, this constant reaching up or working to get up forward just adds more work on your body. So to make it most efficient, you see that I'm already now about an inch off from this desk, so I need to go up higher. So I'm just gonna adjust it here. And from here, still a little short, go a little bit higher. This feels about right. Another thing in relation to seat height is your armrest. So the armrest, you wanna make sure it's not too uh, high, because you see here now it's gonna push my whole shoulder up. You wanna have it so that this at the elbow is at about 90 degrees. And you don't want it too low, because then you feel like you have to reaching for the armrest. So again, seat height so that your entire body and then your hands could access your desk easily. So with this one, I may go up just a little bit higher. So now with my hand at the 90 degree at the elbow and then reach with my hands, I am right there level with the desk. So that's the first thing that you absolutely need to do is adjust the seat height, not for your feet, but for where your hands will be positioned in relation to your desk. So you adjusted the seat height. So what will likely happen is now your feet will start dangling. And if your feet starts dangling, now your body's gonna have to do a lot of work to make sure it doesn't sink down towards the floor because gravity always wins. So when you got the seat height up, now what you're gonna need to do is find a foot rest so that your feet doesn't have to do extra work against gravity. So if you could see right there, there is a foot rest that I placed um, underneath this desk. And all you need to do, um, you get a foot rest, you can get something fancy like that that meets at an incline, or you could get several books to place up. Ultimately, you're going to want to have it so that your feet could rest comfortably in that new seat height position. All right, now I set my, the camera down here at a lower angle so you can see. So again, this seat height is where it's comfortable so that my hands can easily access the desk. And then for your feet, with the hips, you're gonna to wanna to be at about close to 90 degrees. And then with the knees, you really could be out here or closer towards you. And you could see by placing this on here, my legs don't have to do any work in terms of it's too high 
and it's not too low that there's too, too much excess pressure right there at my thigh. So you want it to be just right. So once you have your feet here, I could rest here comfortably and I don't have to worry about doing extra work with my legs. And I guess the real main thing you're trying to work against is making sure that there's not too much pressure of the seat against my thigh. Okay, so you've adjusted seat height. And so now what you're gonna to wanna to address is what your monitor is going to do. Now, because you've adjusted the seat height, you will now need to adjust the monitor for your body. Now, the general rule of thumb is make sure that this monitor is straight and forward center, not to the left or to the right. Now, for anyone that uses multiple monitors, I understand that you may need one or two. Ideally, find one monitor that's gonna be your main monitor, and then your side monitor or your second monitor come off to the side. So you have to do less work in terms of turning left or to the right. Now, if you do, do have two monitors, be very mindful of what you're having on that second monitor. If you find yourself putting a lot of stuff on that second monitor and you're working from that second monitor, you should probably flip it. So the main monitor that's right in front of you, right centered, have a lot of your main content that you're working on, a lot of the attention and visual focus all placed on your main monitor and then put all a lot of your supplemental information on that second monitor. I find that um, when patients do that, they'll be doing less turning and head turns throughout the day. And again, it's all about efficiency. The less amount of work you have to do during the day with movement, you can stay focused and work in, and that way you won't have a lot of the aches and pains throughout the day. Okay, so we got the two monitors set up if you have one. If you just have one, this monitor height, you will want to adjust it so that the top, so that the top of this monitor is just about two finger widths above your eye line. So I will adjust this down, get this out the way. And so from here, when my eye sight is straight forward, I could see that the top of this monitor is just about two finger widths just above. Now, the reason why we do that is to make sure that it's not too low because when the monitor's too low, we're going to then come down, and a lot of our movement and posture is driven by what we see visually. So when the monitor's too low, you end up going to have your head to follow, and then from there, the rest of your posture, which is, again, won't be really efficient for what you need to do during the day. So if you keep it up high, and again, that two finger widths just above your eye line, that brings us to have our head back, and then we could rely on having our head stacked right over our body and be able to withstand this position for long periods of time. Now, I know what you're thinking. I have a laptop. So if you have a laptop, this is what you're gonna to need to do. Now, if you have a laptop versus a monitor, the ideal situation would be to place it on a stand. And then the same rules apply. You're gonna to wanna to have the top edge of your monitor be two finger widths above your eye line. So as you could see, this is a very simple laptop stand and that'll allow you to place your monitor on your laptop to be a lot higher versus having it down low. Now, what happens is if you end up having a laptop stand, that will mean that you will need to have a external keyboard to connect. And so as you could see, by getting the ideal setup, you may need to find extra items so that your work from home ergonomics is at its key, really optimized state. Another thing to consider with your monitor is how far it is from your eyes. Now, my optometrist friends will really like this, but with your monitor, you're gonna wanna have it a comfortable position for you being able to see whatever documents or things you see on the monitor. So a general rule of thumb is about an arm width away but ultimately you could also adjust that with what's on the screen itself. So sometimes with my older patients who may have difficulty seeing or need more reading eyesight or reading glasses, um, I even advise them to go ahead and change the font on the monitor to a bigger size so they, don't ha they have less eye strain when working with a monitor. Um, and so play around with that in terms of, is the stuff or items on the monitor seemingly too small? You could obviously bring it up closer. And the main um, real aspect of that is just minimizing eye strain for you throughout the day. Again, we're trying to build capacity, that endurance to make it through that eight, 10 hour a day. So whether it be bigger font or closer monitor, 
or a combination of the two. By doing that, you're gonna be doing a lot of less of this, that straining of your eyes. That's me straining my eyes. So straining of the eyes would working with the objects that you have. So again, combination of either changing of the distance from your eyes to the monitor and or maybe making adjustments as necessary to the size of the font or whatever that you're working with on your screen. Okay, so we've covered seat height, we've covered monitors. Now, the last but most important thing um, is what you interact with every day. This laptop and anything else such as your mouse and whether it be papers needs to be as close to you as possible. The reason why is if it's too far, you're going to have to reach forward and when you reach forward, that's gonna change your shoulder alignment to shrug forward and have that slouch posture moving forward. And again, that slouch posture isn't the most ideal or optimized to perform throughout the day. So take your keyboard, pull it all the way close to you. Take the mouse, put it all the way close to you. So you really don't have to do a lot of work with the reaching. Um, with patients, I also talk about if you're working with a lot of papers or documents, you could utilize um, a document holder. Or if you're using a lot of papers and notes that you have to use, Take an audit of your desk and see which ones you're using a lot and which ones you're not using as much. That way, the ones and the documents that you're using a lot, go ahead and bring it much closer towards you. If you're right-handed, I'd recommend putting it all onto the right side and then any less frequent items, put it over to the left side. And for my left-handed folks out there, you would just do the opposite. Put a lot of your majority of stuff on the left side and then the, re the least frequently used on the right side. And when you're interacting with your keyboard, you'll want to come in close and have it at a comfortable position. You notice that my wrists are not bent up and they're not bent down. You're really resting flat onto the table and then being able to do the keyboard work if you utilize a lot of keyboard work. Other things to note in terms of when you're interacting with your keyboard is make sure that your hands and wrists are in a comfortable pos position uh, throughout the day. So you're not doing extra work to reach your items, so let's say you have your keyboard and mouse here. Everything is, in, for the most part, an easy neutral position. You are not going like this. That's an extreme position for your wrist. You can do it throughout the day, but you'll start to notice aches and pains at the joints and maybe your muscles. Ideally have the hand and wrist in a more of a straightened neutral position. Same thing goes for your mouse. It doesn't have to be straight up forward. It could be turned in to uh, work with how you're using it. So when you place everything closer towards you, a lot of what your hands and arms have to do instead of reaching forward to get the keyboard too far or other documents, it's gonna be much closer towards you, less work for your shoulders, elbows, and hands. And from there, by doing that, you can maintain this position for a much longer period of time. When you have everything all set up, it should ideally look like this. Now, when you start utilizing a lot of these things, seat height, foot positioning, hand positioning, arm positioning, monitor positioning for your head and neck, a lot of the common issues in terms of neck aches, shoulder pain, wrist pain, now the risk of those injuries will be very much diminished just because you are now no longer working your body in extreme positions for long periods of time. And the extreme position is something you've probably been used to um, you shouldn't really be getting used to it. It should be out of that position, but it's likely this. It's this forward position looking forward like that. And by doing that for eight hours, 10 hours of the day for years, it's very possible to be used to it. And this posture isn't necessarily bad. It's just not efficient or optimized to get what you need to do done throughout the day. And what ends up happening too is when you're in this position for long periods of time, it makes it difficult when you leave work to get out of those positions. Because again, doing this for eight, 10 hours of the day, you're utilizing, you're really solidifying uh, motor control and joint positions that are just used to that position. And I get a lot of patients that for whatever reason, if they're here and suddenly they wanna play tennis or do overhead lifting stuff, it's very hard to do just because they've been in this position for eight, 10 hours of the day. So if you optimize a lot of your setup at your desk, then your body will respond in kind and you'll feel less tired, less aches 
at the end of the day when you're working out. Thank you all for watching this video. If you liked this video, hit like, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to this channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Is there anything that I didn't cover? Is there any other work from home situations or conditions that you'd like me to cover? I'd be happy to know what your thoughts are. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.